Hey, what's up everybody? It is DJ Jerry here with Shop Time and bringing you a fixture that I have fallen in love with and a lot of people have had questions on is the Intimidator Hybrid 140SR. Now I put some haze in the air just so you can kind of see the beams because to me this fixture is really important when it comes to the beams, when it comes to uh, the frost filter which makes a nice flood, lock, uh, flood wash. So I put some haze in the air so that way you can kind of see exactly what those beams are doing because again, this being a hybrid gives it three different opportunities such as a beam, a wash, and a spot. <clears throat> so you can get some really cool things out of it. Um, I have it hooked up to Show Express so I can show you some of the different features and show you exactly what I want it to do. It does have a lot of great built-in programs um, and people have been asking for more videos on this fixture and I apologize I haven't been able to get those out. The reason being is because this fixture is kind of that next step, that next level type fixture. and. We've had uh, bigger production companies or production companies in general reaching out to us asking to rent these. So we took our inventory, we originally bought four of them. We've doubled our inventory, we have eight of them now. And again, it's hard for us to even keep them on the shelves when we're using them because everybody else is renting them from us. So they're a great fixture. You can see right here, this is just the regular spot. Um, what I wanna do is show you the beam options and I wanna show you how, how fine you can get the pinpoint on that beam. Um, from certain distances and such. So you could technically pin spot a quarter if you wanted to with this fixture uh, because of the aperture that's uh, in the gobo -go options and then also the focus and the zoom. You can do a really tight beam with it. So this is uh, again the Intimidator, Show Me DJ's Intimidator Hybrid 140SR. It's an SR lamp, it's not an LED. Again, it's that next step above the LED. So if you're looking to get past LEDs, and get into something a little bit bigger, this is that fixture that you're gonna want. So I'm gonna show you here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna aim the fixture your way a little bit. Might be too much, there we go. And then I'll, all I'm gonna do is actually just change the aperture through the gobo wheel. And let's see. So that is the tightest aperture it has. If you can see right now, it's about the size of a quarter. But what I can do is I can actually zoom that in. You zoom it in, there we go. We're gonna zoom it, and then I'm going to focus it. And So after you zoom and focus the actual fixture, you can see the tightness of this beam. And at about, oh, I would say 20, 30 feet, 20 feet, uh, that right there, the end of that beam is actually probably the size of about a, I would say about a tennis ball. Um, so again, it shows you how tight that beam can get. And I'll give you a little side profile. Now you see the beam is actually bigger here at the fixture. And basically what's happening is it's manipulating by using lenses. It's, it's bending the light so it actually tightens up and creates a tighter beam um, by using the aperture. And again, also uh, by using the zoom and the focus. So here's some of the other options. Uh, again, it does have some great global options. Let me tilt you up a little bit so you can see that. Now. Again, this is a very bright fixture, so it's probably hard for you guys to even see what this looks like on camera. If you ever get an opportunity to see one of these things in person, uh, you have to check them out. Again, they're, they're super bright, they're fast, they've got a lot of cool options. <clears throat> and to show you some of the options, uh, the eight facet prism, and actually I'm gonna shoot this onto the truck. Might be able to see that a little better. There we go. And let's go back to that pinpoint. Um, so there you can see how tight that beam is. Maybe, kind of. <laughs> so right now it's probably a little bit bigger than a golf ball uh, for that spot. And that's about 10 feet away. And what you can actually do again by zooming and focusing, I can actually make it that much tighter. So now I'm just, I am about the size of a golf ball uh, with that that spot and by focusing you can see how much 
just by doing the focus, you can see how much that changes. I'm gonna grab the camera on the side here so you can kind of get a side profile. But here's what I was talking about with the beam. Right here, it's about the size of a baseball, and then it just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it's almost like a pin. Um, so again, you can, it's pretty intense. Sorry, I, you can't see it because it's too bright on the camera. Um, but <clears throat> again, these lights are just piercing. They're a phenomenal fixture. And uh, we've had, again, a lot of success with them. So I'm just gonna scan through the gobo wheels here quick. So one of the cool things, <clears throat> so one of the cool things with this fixture is it does have dual gobo wheels. It has one that, uh, the one gobo wheel has a total of 16 different gobos. And then the second gobo wheel will actually allow you to gobo morph. You can actually go from one gobo and just actually focus into the other gobo. You get some really cool features out of that. Um, but what I'm gonna do is zoom this out as far as it goes. And then I'm gonna show you, let's see, there were some cool gobos down here. All right, so we'll just do this one. Now I'm gonna focus that, get the tightest focus I can. <clears throat> and now what I wanna do is actually show you inside the beam. And the reason I say that is uh, because when you, there you go, you can kinda of see how it prisms out. And that's not a prism actually, that's just the gobo. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to add prism in there. But you can see you get a beam going this way, a beam going that way, a beam going that way. And all it is, is basically those dots. You can see those dots right there. Um, that's all it is. So, let's go ahead and we're gonna turn that prism on. Okay, again, I apologize if the fixture's too bright and you can't see it very well. Um, but we're gonna turn on an eight facet prism. You can see how much that spreads it out. Now, if we put some rotation on that prism, you'll be able to see in these beams, you can see all of these, uh, these shards of light that are coming out of this. So again, this is a really cool effect. Um, like I can actually stand right here and it's not really hitting me too much in the face, but the view you get, which will give you that tunnel view, the view you get on something like this is extremely amazing. So that's the looking into the fixture and again it's not that bright where you can actually see uh the fixture without being blinded but you get the effect of all the beams around you which is a really cool feature that is the eight facet the eight facet prism and the other cool thing with this fixture i'm going to turn the eight facet off i'm going to turn on the linear prism which is now going to give me more of a fan effect so let's actually put a rotation on that <clears throat> So looking at it now, you can see how it's more of a fan as opposed to, uh, and this is probably gonna be a little bit brighter, yeah. So you can see how it's more of a fan effect as opposed to the, uh, the circular effect with the prism, or the eight facet prism. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to do both prisms. And now, Hopefully you can see that, but now you can see how much wider you get uh, by doing that. And we have it zoomed all the way out, we have it focused, um, but you can see, I mean, it's got a nice good spread. And this is only about 10, 10 feet away. That's about 20 feet away um, back behind us up top there. Uh, the, the last thing I wanna show you is when you start putting some rotations on top of the rotations, you can get some really cool things. So there's the regular uh, circle prism. And then we're going to, there we go. Now we're just turning the linear prism the other way and you get a really cool motion effect. So if you really want to get creative with this, what you can do is you can actually change up some of these go-go's. That one's probably one of my favorites. I like the squares. Uh, and again, it gives it a really cool uh, motion effect by using those prisms. So uh, the two things in this video that I wanted to show was the, uh, the tightness of the beam. Um, and we're going to do some other videos to show you some of the beam options, such as the beam, the spot, and the wash. We'll show you the differences on those. 
Um, but the prisms, to me, again, this is a really cool feature that the Intimidator Hybrid has. So if you have questions or comments, put those down below. I'd love to hear some of those. Uh, this is DJ Jerry with Shop Time. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.